Today, I'll be talking about t-shirt painting. So the first part of our process is to create a sketch and it's basically thinking of the of forming the ideas that you'd like to put on your t-shirt. So I thought of um, paint, painting my own volcano and some street elements to it. So let's start gathering our materials. First, let's have the t-shirt. And then, um, it's just like a backing board that you can use behind the t-shirt. So, so all you gotta do is to put that, not behind the shirt, but inside the shirt. Make sure it's all flat and clean and it has to be at the center of the shirt where the design would be painted. And then these are the brushes that we're gonna use. And then our palette, this one's an acrylic. This is where we're gonna mix all the colors that we're gonna use here. Our water supply and containers for our different paints. The paint rug. And then these are the actual paints that we're gonna use. It's the Tulco Super White rubberized textile in. So I got the super white and lemon yellow. And for us to create majority of all the colors, all we need are the primary colors, which is the yellow, um, blue, and red. This is called the pigments, and it's used to add colors to blank rubberized paint like this one. So instead of buying an entirely new uh, container of colors like this one, all you gotta do is to get one of these. And as long as you have the super white paint, you can create any kind of colors. Plus this is way more economical because it's only 114 and this one's 140. So the super white costs 164. Then we have a few sticks that we will be using to get some paints and pour it into our containers. One of the most important steps that you should not ignore is priming the shirt. It's simply putting white where your design goes. While waiting for the white prime to dry, we can now prepare the paint. To create an orange color, we have to mix yellow with a few drops of the red pigment. Just the right amount of pigment according to your preferred orange tone. Now we create the primary color red. We simply put the red pigment to the white paint, mix it thoroughly. Then we add the blue pigment to the white paint to create blue. You can create other secondary colors like green and purple by mixing two other primary colors. Though I prefer to mix it later and I'll do it in the palette so I can make some adjustments according to my needs. You can only start painting once the white primer is dry. We now proceed to working on the background objects like the clouds and sky since they are further behind of our painting. Layering is a technique that makes any painting interesting to look at. It makes you see numerous colors at some particular areas of the painting. Let's say for example on the clouds. You can see that I painted it yellow as its main color and I added several colors like yellow orange, orange, light purple, lighter yellow and a very few touches of red. You can achieve these colors by experimenting on the palette. I'd like the clouds to look really interesting by having a strong contrast of colors. So we gotta have a cool background, but the clouds need to look warm. It's like being hit by the sun rays 
late in the afternoon. By the way, for example, you're going out and you're going to leave your painting here in one of the properties that this um, rubberized Tolko paint is that it's it can dry, but acrylic still dries faster than this one. But just to make sure that you're not going to have a dried paint when you come back, all you got to do is to spray some water into it like this. So once you get back, it stays fresh, still usable for your painting. So I just need to head out and I'll get back soon. These objects below are buildings. These buildings are done in layers. The further the building away from us, the lighter it should be. The closer the object, the darker it gets. This is called aerial perspective, also known as atmospheric perspective. It is the method of creating the illusion of depth. We are now at the last phase of the painting. We now add the details. In this case, the details that I'm going to work on are the electric posts and wires. You have to consider three factors to have a consistent line work. Number one, the kind of brush. Number two, viscosity of the paint or the thickness of the paint. And number three, the amount of pressure you use on the brush. So let me talk more about the pressure on the brush. This is all about control. You can use your other hand to support your main hand to maintain the pressure and amount of paint that you apply. Sometimes you have to stop breathing for a few seconds to maintain focus and sustain control of your strokes. I know it's a little bit weird, but it really works the same way snipers control their shots.
it's best to add some text like Bicol region since it's going to be more appealing to people who are looking for souvenirs. But for this particular work, we're not going to put some text like a big text here because I would prefer doing it using the silk screen method to make it look more professional and industry grade quality. So this time, I'll simply put my signature instead to add some sense of pride to my work. <laughs> 